Hello, we're now going to talk about um, transfer functions. And this is really just a very uh, neat way of describing convolution systems using Laplace transforms. And the, the key thing that all of this does is it replaces this uh, compl complicated um, convolution representation of a system. So if you remember before, we had um, an input-output system. So it took an input u, has an output y, and provided the system was linear, time invariant, and causal, it could be described um, by a convolution system. Um, and so that we could get any output y by convolving a given input with this thing called the impulse response. And the impulse response was the response of the system to this impulsive input at time t is equal to zero. So we have one of these convolution systems, and by taking Laplace transforms, we're able to simplify this uh, rather ugly looking uh, convolution and replace it um, with uh, multiplication. And the advantage is, I guess, minor when you have a single system in isolation, but it really becomes very significant when we start imagining interconnecting lots and lots of these input-output systems together. If we were to describe this with convolutions, we would be feeding integrals into integrals into integrals and trying to wrap feedback loops around, and it would just become an enormous mess. Um, the key thing that taking Laplace transforms does is it replaces this convolution with multiplication. And in turn, that turns the process of interconnecting lots of systems together through these block diagrams that you've seen elsewhere, I'm sure, just into basically algebra rules. So the process of interconnection becomes just algebra, um, which is much easier to handle and the motivation for everything I'm going to tell you today. So sort of the key, ooh, that didn't work for some reason. Um, uh, the key advantage here is that by taking the Laplace transform, we can replace this convolution with a transfer function representation, which is just obtained by taking Laplace transforms. So the Laplace transform of our output y is equal to the Laplace transform of our impulse response g multiplied by the Laplace transform of our input um, u. And then we do everything in the Laplace domain, including all of our interconnection and design and all sorts of other things, safe in the knowledge that when we're done, we could always return to the time domain whenever we wanted uh, the Laplace transform, we just transform back. Um, and today we're just going to derive uh, this relationship here. I have no doubt that you've um, seen this before. It's just so central um, to the, the kind of the whole Laplace transfer function rationale. Let's just see it again. It won't take that long. Um, and we're just going to derive this representation here. And the derivation's not particularly hard. Uh, we just more or less have to apply the definition of the Laplace transform and do a little bit of um, rearranging and massaging of, uh, of integrals. So the first thing, let's just take the one-sided Laplace transform of y. Um, and this is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of y of t e to the minus st dt. And our convention was to call our transformed variables to replace the lowercase function of time with an uppercase variable with the same letter as a function of s. So this is the Laplace transform of y is denoted uh, by capital Y of s. And we know y of t is given by this convolution. So let's just substitute it in. Um, so we have, again, 0 to infinity, and now we have the integral from 0 to t. And y of t is just g of t minus tau u of tau, and then we have d tau e to the minus st dt. And this is just a constant uh, with respect to the, this integral here. So we, we're free to pop this through here, um, and then we'll um, reorder. Um, the integration. So we'll just do a little bit of massaging before we get there. Um, so put on these integrals again, and then here I'm going to have g of t minus tau, 
we're going to pull this through and we're also going to rewrite this as t plus tau minus tau. So here we have e to the um, minus um, t minus tau s u of tau e to the minus s tau. So we've, we've just added and subtracted a tau in here and we've split the exponential in two pieces and we've just put the various bits near where it looks like they're going to want to go um, and then here we have a d tau dt. So we've not done anything yet, we've just done a little bit of algebra and now we're going to flip the order of the integrals. Um, so let's just draw a sort of a picture to um, so we have sort of clear in our head what's uh, going on. So here we have t and here we have tau. And so what are we doing when we do this double integral? Um, so this is the line t is equal to tau. So in this inner one we're integrating from we're integrating tau from 0 to t. So we're integrating tau from 0 to t. So like this strip here and we're doing it for every single value of t. So the way this double integral is working is we're integrating with respect to tau and we're doing that for every value of t and then we're summing them all summing all of these slices up like that. Um, what would happen if we did it the other way? So there's no reason why we couldn't first integrate over the same area by integrating um, t from tau to infinity and then summing up for all the different values of tau. So there's no reason why we couldn't do our integral like that. And if we swap the order of integration, that's what we're doing. It would just have to change our limits um, correspondingly. So just by changing the order of integration, so now we're integrating over t first and we integrate from tau to infinity and then we integrate this one from 0 to infinity still and here we have g of t minus tau e to the minus t minus tau and u of tau um, e to the minus s tau but we've changed the order dt d tau and now the critical thing to notice here is the only bit that depends on t is, is this bit here and with one final variable substitution will be done so we'll replace we'll do the substitution uh, should we do it in orange we'll say u is equal to t minus tau and in particular for constant tau this implies that du is equal to dt and in particular when t is equal to tau u is equal to zero and when t is equal to infinity u is equal to infinity so doing this substitution this becomes a u this becomes a u dt becomes du and this becomes a zero and now we see that this is just constant with respect to u so we can pull it here and this is now just the definition the first integral the inner integral is just the definition of the Laplace transform of g and then the remaining one is the definition of the Laplace transform of u and they'll just be multiplied together so this is equal to g of s u of s um, and there we have it so whenever you have a convolution so a convolution in the time domain corresponds to multiplication in the Laplace domain and um, this is really sort of powering uh, all of this linear systems theory and it's, it's how you can sort of simply build up complicated systems because the processes of interconnection just correspond to algebraic rules and <laughs>